My goal in this screencast is to talk you through the example Goolsby, Levitt, and Syverson use to illustrate comparative statics analysis when feedback effects across markets are important, to introduce you to the idea of computational general equilibrium models. Because general equilibrium effects are secondary to the usual partial equilibrium effects, microeconomists usually are content to focus comparative statics analysis the study of how exogenous shifts in demand or supply alter market outcomes, to limit that focus to the usual partial equilibrium diagram. But there are a host of applications, such as tracing out the impact of a sudden jump in oil prices, or the employment effects of a trade agreement, or changes in social welfare policies, where we want to consider feedback effects across markets. Conceptually, the idea is that the effect of shifting out the demand in, say, the market for corn, so that the price of corn rises, will cause the price to rise in markets for substitutes, like wheat, which in turn will further increase the price for corn. We solve partial equilibrium supply and demand problems quantitatively by applying the algebra of simultaneous equations. Computing the general equilibrium solutions is just an extension. In chapter 14 of their microeconomics text, Goolsby, Levitt, and Syverson ask what would happen if the government mandates increasing use of corn ethanol in fossil fuels and assume that general equilibrium effects are only noticeable in the markets for corn and wheat. That is, that changing corn and wheat prices have no impact on equilibria in any other markets. They begin by specifying initial conditions in those two markets. We have demands for corn and demands for wheat, supply curves for corn and wheat. The equilibrium requirement that price equates quantity demanded and quantity supplied reduces our problem to two equations in two unknowns. There are a variety of ways of solving systems of linear equations but I think the elimination method is the one least likely to lead to mistakes for these computational general equilibrium models. Setting supply equal to demand for corn, we get PC is equal to 20 minus PC plus PW. That gives me my equation 1, which would be 2PC minus PW equals 20. Doing the same for wheat yields PW equals 20 minus PW plus PC. So using the same format I get negative PC plus 2PW equals 20. The idea of the elimination method is to transform one of the equations and then add the two together to eliminate one of the two variables. I'm going to take equation 1 and multiply it by 2 to get 4PC minus 2PW is equal to 40. Add the two equations together and I have 3PC, there's no PW is equal to 60, so PC is equal to 20. Since QC is equal to PC, I've got QC equals 20, and substituting these back into the demand curve for corn, I have 20 is equal to 20 minus 20 plus PW or PW is equal to 20, which in turn implies that QW is equal to 20. And so we have our general equilibrium. Now we are ready to ask what happens if the government mandates that 10% of fossil fuels incorporate corn ethanol, that is, we have a shift in demand for corn. Let's assume this shifts demand out from D A D sub A to D sub B by 12 million bushels at any price for corn. 
excess demand for corn at $20 a bushel would drive the price up by just enough to bring quantity supplied and quantity demanded in line. The change in the equilibrium price is found by dividing the 12 million bushels uh, the, by the 12 million bushel impact on demand by the difference in the slope of the demand supply curve and the slope of the demand curve. And that's six. So partial equilibrium analysis tells us that the price of corn would rise to 26. But this increase in the price of corn would shift out the demand for the substitute good wheat to D sub B, raising the price of wheat, which in turn will affect the demand for corn. These feedback effects play out until prices in both markets are once again consistent. Scenario C. To find this new, general, this new general equilibrium, we solve the new system of simultaneous equations. I suggest you stop the video now and solve it for yourself, resuming the video once you have done so. If you got that the price and quantity of corn is 28 and the price and quantity of wheat is 24 in general equilibrium, then you can just end the video now. Here's my solution, again using the elimination method to solve for the system of to solve the system of simultaneous equations. Equating supply with demand, we get PC is equal to 32 minus PC plus PW, which implies equation one is going to be 2PC minus PW is equal to 32. Doing the same for wheat, we have again PW is equal to 20 minus PW plus PC, which yields equation 2 of negative PC plus 2PW is equal to 20. So I multiply the first equation by 2. 1 prime is now 4PC minus 2PW is equal to 64. Add the two together and I get 3PC is equal to 84. P sub C is equal to 28. So QC is equal to 28. And in the demand curve, I get 28 is equal to 32 minus 28 plus PW, or P sub W is equal to 28 minus 4 equals 24. And that's also the output in the wheat market.